Right now is your time. You can do more. You can do, have, and become more every day of your life. Your future is bigger than the past. And what I'm going to share with you right now is a goal setting process that has helped me achieve every major goal in my life. It's quick, it's practical, but most importantly, it works. What do I know about goals? Well, I stand before you today with the incredible honor and privilege at 32 years old. I built an enormous company from the ground up with no MBA. My parents don't own a business. I was a part of 1% of the population that ever got the opportunity to play in the National Football League. 1%, and that's being very generous. My first major book, Winning Plays, came out in 2016, published by the third biggest publisher in the world. All over the world, I get to speak in, in Turkey, Bulgaria, Russia. You know, meet with some of the most prestigious leaders and get text messages and phone calls at 2 a.m. in the morning and built out a successful, thriving consulting business going into the best that do it. And they rely on me to deliver. I don't say any of this to impress you guys. Please hear me out on that. I don't say that to impress you. I say that to impress upon you. That if I've been able to do what I do at 32 years old, I promise you this because I know for a fact that so many of you are a lot more talented than me at a lot of things. There is more for you to do, there is more for you to have, and there is definitely more for you to become starting right now. I know that deep down within my heart. I know that deep down within my heart. And it starts with that vision, it starts with a goal setting process. So here we go. I'm gonna go quick because I got some other great stuff I wanna share with you. Preferably as soon as possible, I want you to set a stopwatch for four minutes. And since all of you guys don't have pen and paper in front of you, I highly encourage you to take out your smartphone. This may be the one thing that you want to take back to your district and your staff and your students. I want you to set a stopwatch for four minutes. And the reason why I want you to set a stopwatch for four minutes is because what happens when we think about a goal whether that's personal or professional, what happens when we think about a goal or something that we want to achieve desperately or something that we're just very passionate about? All the negative and self-diminishing thoughts. You know, and the older we get in life, those thoughts creep in a little bit harder. We're estimated to have anywhere between 45,000 to 65,000 thoughts per day. 45,000 to 65,000 thoughts per day. Here's the kicker. The older we get in life, the more we experience life, the more we experience death, the more we experience divorce, the more we see people around us experience death and divorce, the more bad stuff happens, the more school shootings that take place, the more tragic things that happen in the world, those thoughts become even more and more and more and more and more discouraging and negative. So as a leader, we have to do our part in getting those thoughts out of us and getting those thoughts away. And when we're talking about strategic initiatives or goals that we want to achieve as a leader or in our personal life or as a district, we have to limit the noise. So setting a stopwatch for four minutes puts you on the path to do just that. And after you set the stopwatch for four minutes, I want you to write down without thinking about how is this goal going to happen or what are the challenges that I'm going to experience along the way with it, achieving this goal. I don't want you to worry about any of that stuff. I want you to write down eight to 10 goals that you want to achieve by this time next year. And it's good to have some mixture in there. I want, you to have some, I want you to have two leadership goals on that list. You have to, of course, have a district goal or something that you want to do from a strategic initiative standpoint for your school, your district, or your students. And then I highly encourage you to have a health goal. Why? Because we cannot become a transformation leader and make a tremendous difference in the world and impact the lives of everyone around us if we dropped out of a massive heart attack at 65 years old because we neglected our health. That's where I spend a lot of my time with some of the most prestigious leaders in the world that think that they can pour all their time and energy into working out and building a business and, and the vision and the company with neglecting their health. Because I've, I've seen it all too often that some of the most powerful leaders in the world, they drop dead or they experience a heart attack because they neglected their health. You cannot change the world from a hospital bed. So I highly encourage you to have a health goal on that list. And don't worry, 
After you set the, do the four minutes, you could do that over and over again. When I do this exercise, it usually takes me a week, two weeks sometimes, to finish this exercise. Four minutes, I wait 30 minutes, I do the four minutes again. And what you'll notice is that maybe some goals on that list might not be for you this year. That's fine. But I want you to have a list of eight to ten goals that you think are for you. No one else. No one else. Because as I said before, when you step into the moment of becoming the best version of yourself and you get ignited, you get passionate, that's going to rub off on everybody in your district. Everything rises and falls on leadership. After you have that long list of eight to ten goals, I want you to look at that list and pick one goal that if someone told you that you could achieve just one goal on that list, if they waved the magic wand in your face and said just one goal, which one goal would drastically transform your life if you were to achieve it by this time next year? What is that one goal? The very last part of the process is this, and this is what nobody does. If you go this far in the process, I can promise all of you leaders right now that you are thinking longer and harder about the type of leader that you want to become by this time next year than a lot of people, than a lot of people. After you define what that game-changing goal is, I want you to write down 25 to 50 things that you have to do in order to execute and carry out and achieving that goal. 25 to 50 things. Just as your favorite NFL team, just as your favorite NBA team or your MLB team has a game plan as to what they have to do to win that game on Sunday and to compete and win a Super Bowl, you as a leader need your, need your own personal game plan because I know that your district has a game plan. I know that your school has a game plan. I know you have that in place because we all do, right? But as I said before, everything rises and falls on leadership. Leadership is not a difference maker. It is the difference maker. And if you have two equally talented schools, district teams, organizations, guess who's going to win? The team, district, school, or organization with the best leader. Stopwatch for four minutes, eight to ten goals, one game changer, 25 to 50 things that you have to do in order to fulfill that goal. That's it. That's the goal setting process. It's practical and it works. And here's an added bonus tip to make sure that all of us in this room do not fall into the University of Scranton study. Why? Why? Why do you want to achieve those goals that are on your list? Why? Just as your school or your district has a mission statement as to why you do what you do, the sole purpose, the sole purpose of you guys, well, you as a leader, you need a defining moment. You need your mission statement. You need to know what makes you tick. Because there's going to be days where you don't feel good. There's going to be days where you don't want to get out of bed. Or there's going to be days where a tragedy happens at school or in the district, and you have to think fast. So we have to get connected on a very deep emotional level as to why we do what we do. Why did you get into this industry in the first place? Why? When you stay connected to that, ladies and gentlemen, I promise you this. Your life will never, ever, ever be the same again.